Some of different fields. First Corinthians chapter 2. I want to talk to you today and I want to talk to you on the subject. What's your life say? I want to talk to you on the subject, what does life show you? Whether you know it or not, you're showing something. And whether you know this or not today, I want you to know it's going to be. You were created to show the glory of God. You were created to show the glory of God. That's what you were created. That doesn't mean everybody is. You don't understand that. That's the soul. The first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 31 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Yeah. How many times in our life do we do things not thinking about what it's showing? This morning in prayer, as I was praying for this meeting and praying for you guys, what God wanted me to share with you. The Lord spoke to me more than one time in prayer about what is our life showing others. I don't know about you, but I, I want us to show the glory of God. I want us to live in such a way that every time someone looks at us, they see Jesus. You, you need to understand there, there's always something coming off of you. You was created to show something. You was created with, if you understand the lights have a glare that comes off of them. Your life is the same way. The Bible says you're the light of the world. You're a city set up on a hill that others might see. Those who are in darkness can see their way. You make a light for the path of those who are darkness. But your light only shows like that when you're in the glory of God. Some people like to use Christianity as a Sunday morning, Sunday night maybe. Very few anymore on Sunday night. But mostly Sunday mornings. Sunday morning Christians. Sunday morning Christians, you ain't going to be much. But God, God's looking for people who have decided that seven days a week, 24 hours a day, they're glory in God. They're glory in God. They're, he's looking for people that says, this ain't about a one time a week or two time a week or three, even three times a week. This is about a lifestyle laid down. The Bible says that you should lay down your life wholly acceptable Unto Christ, which is your reasonable service. It's Romans chapter 12. The Bible tells us that God is looking for a people that when people see them, all they see is people glorifying Him. One of the hardest things when you're out on the street ministry is to get people to understand we don't go to church for others. If you come here because of me, if you come here because of someone else, you'll get disappointed. And you'll eventually quit. One of the things that you hear over and over on the streets is, I ain't going to church with them hypocrites. Well, then you can go to hell with them. Two choices. You, you either come and help change the hypocrites or you'll end up in hell with the hypocrites. That's the two choices. See, because everyone has fallen and come short of the glory of God. But God is trying to get us to a place that we understand that we should be conscious of everything we're doing. If I can do anything else this morning in this meeting for you, this is what I want to do. I want to bring awareness to your conscience that when you move every day of your life and every moment of your life, it represents something. I wonder if you ever heard the old saying, walking on eggshells? That's the way you should be with God. Well, I don't think, well, let's keep reading. Let's read some more. Oh, hallelujah. Look with me in 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children. Obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says. So you can sacrifice yourself to death, but if you ain't obedient to... You know, I've had people all, all the time in ministry, they say, well, I can't be obedient because I don't hear the Lord. This is the Lord. Right. He wasn't talking about being obedient to His voice, He was talking about being obedient to His Word. Amen. So many people's mixed up on that. They think because they ain't got a Word, very few people hear the audible voice of God, but everybody has this. 
or has the chance to have this or has the ability to have this in America, which is an awesome thing. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust as in your ignorance. Can I tell you something? Every time that we participate in an old action or an old man mentality, you're ignorant. I wish that I could have a speaker. It's just who I am. I would love to have a speaker in all of your lives and all week long I can see you. And every time you participate in something ignorant, I say, Ignorant! <laughs> I wish God would do it. He doesn't, but I wish he would. Because he's a gentleman. He's, he's so easy going. He lets you do whatever you want. He gives you free will. My, my God. But I wish sometimes that every time we've done stupid, all of us included, me included, that every time we participated or had part in anything that was part of the old creature, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away, the Bible says. But every time that we decide to participate with the old person, the old mindset, the old things, that God would say, ignorant! It's funny to think about it, but it's so real. And we, we lightly think about it. We just think, oh, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. Paul says you're not your own. You was bought with a price. You're a bond slave. To, the Paul said, I am a bond slave to Christ. Yeah. Are you? See, your life will tell that. What glory, what you're showing tells whether you are or whether you're not. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the form of lust is, is your ignorance. But as he has called you into his in glory and holy, you are also holy as you are conducted. As you are conducted. You understand what conducted means? It means conducted. You ever heard him say, how are you conducting yourself? But as he called you into his holy, you also be holy as you are conducted. Because it is written, be holy, I am. And if you call on the Father who without participate judgment, according to each one's works, conducts yourself throughout the times of your stay here. What does it say? Stay here in what? Fear's left the church. There is no fear. Because if I was God, I'd strike people dead. I probably had to be dead with them, but because there's so much folly in the church. Play. Play. Play church. I can live however I want to, come flop down in the seat, and it's no big deal. It is a big deal. And God's coming back to the house of God. The Bible says he'll judge the house of God first. That means His presence is going to intensify. The fear of the Lord is coming back to the house of God. And we could see the same thing in an eyes of fire scene. People could start falling dead. We say, why? Well, that's, that's New Testament. Before you think it's the old. Help you with that. Because so many people, oh, that's Old Testament. No, that's the New Testament. And they fell dead because they lied to... Well, there's people lies every week when they come into church. I meet people all the time. Most people I meet, all of them are Christians. It amazes me everybody's a Christian when we ain't doing nothing. It amazes me 99% of the people that you see on the streets are Christians. Well, do you know the Lord? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Do you go to church? Well, not really. I don't want to go to church. All them hypocrites. It amazes me that most people come into church service after service. They're Christians, but their life doesn't show Christianity. It amazes me we have a church full of people that has no fear or reverence for God because they don't understand the judgment seat. We understand grace and mercy. We understand we're under that, but we don't understand the end. We don't have a problem living however we want to because we know God's a God of grace and mercy, but He's also a God of judgment. Nobody preaches that anymore because we want everybody happy and throwing money in the pot from plate. But God's going to judge all of us according to our... What? what? 
There are so many preachers preaching you don't have to do nothing. But the Bible says you're going to be judged by your works. So if you're going to be judged by your works, they must be something that you have to do besides just believing on Jesus. We have so many preachers today want to preach just believe on Jesus. That's all you have to do. Then you can live like the devil. Can I tell you the devil believes there's a Jesus? Can I tell you this morning that God himself knows that the devil knows that he's real? The Bible says that God told the devil out of heaven. So the devil knows he's real. He knows all about God. He knows all about heaven. But he tries to deceive people into believing just because you know about Jesus that you're okay. You're not okay just because you know about Jesus. You're okay because you have the works of Jesus. You're okay because you have a relationship with Jesus. You're okay because you're holy as He is holy. You're okay because you look like Christ. That's the only way you're okay. All things other than that, the judgment seat, you'll be judged for your works. No one wants to tell us that. Because we have more fear of men than we do fear of God. He didn't say anything about fear of man. He also, he also says in another place, he says, don't fear what man can do to you, but fear what I can do to you afterwards. Man can only kill your flesh, the body. This is the temple I'm in. This ain't me. They can kill this a hundred times over. I still live. That's why Paul wasn't worried about being in a Roman jail cell still preaching to the people who's going to try to kill him. That's why Peter didn't care if they killed him. That's why James, John, and all the other disciples lived a lifestyle that they did not care what man could do to their body. They cared about what God could do to their soul long after man is gone. Someone has to tell this generation there is a lifestyle that God's called us to. There is a work that He's called us to do. There is a place that He's called us to live. There is a holy, acceptable way of God that we must stand up and be. Someone has to tell us. Everybody wants to tell us about grace and mercy, and it's awesome. Thank God for grace and mercy. But grace gives you the power to overcome, not to come. God gave, God gave you grace so you could overcome sin and become Christ. So many people want to use grace to become sin. No, to overcome sin. There's nothing about that in there. He says, have the fear of God as you walk holy. I wonder if we had a loudspeaker in our minds and every time we started to do stuff like that, hey, ignorant! Do you know there's a judgment day? I pray that I wish they would. I wish they would send angels to whisper to us. Why, how, how, well, because the Bible says he'll give me the, the power to speak to angels to go do the works of the ministry. I'm praying that angels would start showing up in people's lives. Why? Because I have a burden for souls more than I have a, a burden to be popular. I have a burden to see someone get to heaven more than I care about impressing them. I have a burden for someone not to end up at the judgment seat and look into his fiery eyes and he see the worst thing that you'll ever hear. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It's the worst statement that your ears will ever hear. All the other things will pass away. None of that stuff will matter. At the end, it will only matter. Two things is going to matter. What's Jesus going to say? Build houses, buy cars, buy all the stuff you want. All that stuff's going to be gone. And he's going to look at one thing. He's going to judge us by our works. How did our works look here? You can't work your way into heaven. You can't work your way into salvation. But he's going to judge you by your works. Because it's impossible to be like Christ and not have something that looks like. You, you, the Bible says you can't work your way into heaven. But it also says faith without works is dead. What he's trying to tell us is it is impossible to take on the image of something unless you become something. 
It is impossible to keep walking around the same way you've always been, doing the same old things you've always done. Well, I'm better than I used to be. So what? I'm better than I used to be too. I'm smarter. I'm older. I ain't as dumb as I was when I was young. That doesn't make me any more sanctified, any more holy than I was when I was young. The only thing it makes me is I got some wisdom from living some years, but less and better, better than that, I have the power of living God in me. So many people but think because they got a little older, got a little smarter, that they're a little bit smarter than they used to be and they're doing a little less than they used to do. That makes them God. That doesn't make you godly at all. It makes you foolish. Because you'll never accomplish the things of God out of your own flesh. The wisdom that we need is the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God that tells us that we have things in our lives that should not be. What happened to the Holy Ghost? See, people want to walk around all the time. They want to say, well, Jesus lives in me. Jesus don't live in here. Jesus is at the right hand of the throne. The only thing that lives in you is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God lives in you. The Holy Spirit's a man. He's here with you. He guides, directs you, gives you peace. He gives you direction. But if you don't listen, then you're no different than you was. Obedience makes you holy. Not sacrifice. Obedience. Obedience to His Word. We don't participate in the things of the world. We don't become partners with the things of the world. I mean, recently we just had to make some decisions to depart ways with some of the people who helped us in the outreach. Why? Because it was either Jesus or them. Bye. I'll always stand on the side of Jesus. We'll always stand on the side that preached the gospel. I could care less how much stuff you got and how much you give us to the outreach. You'll never have a partner with me. If I can't preach Christ, I'm done. I'll always walk away. Same way with people. Anytime that a person makes you get to the place of making decisions, will I be Christ-like or will I just blend in? It's time to part ways. Too many people trying to satisfy man, trying to make people friends, trying to have friendship with the devil. The Bible says, what does man have to do with darkness? What does light have to do with it? Have no fellowship with them. Come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Where are you living? What's your life saying? What happens when you have to make some lines in the sand? What happens when your workplace says never say nothing else about Jesus? Walmart won't let you talk about Jesus right now. They'll fire you on the spot. But we still go to Walmart. When will the church become the church? When will they make their mind up that what he said he meant? When will people be able to see the difference more than us acting crazy? Flopping on the floor, shaking, jumping, running, shouting. That's all great. Them are, them are manifestations of the presence. If you get fire on you, you'll roll, ask Rob. I watched it firsthand. <laughs> Till it blew up, Rob went to running across. Wah! Then he got to rolling. Reminded me of a lot of people I see in church. Made me understand why people get fire on them. They do what they do. Which I already knew. But that stuff doesn't make you holy. That just makes you have an encounter. Encounter doesn't always change you unless you let it. You can meet someone every day, but you don't have to become like that person unless you decide to. That's a willful decision. How many times of our life every day is the old man still appearing and we do nothing about it? Resist the devil and he'll. What is resisting the devil? Could it be as simple as resisting your flesh? This is one of the things I like to talk about all the time. People tell me, oh, I got devils. No, you just got flesh. Because demons won't stay where the presence of God is. The anointing destroys the yoke. I can pray for anybody in here. If you had a devil, it's going. Why? Because I have the power of the devil. But you can leave and go out this door and let your flesh control you all you want and be influenced by the devil, and that's a total different thing. 
And that's 90% of the things that we see in the church more than we see demons, even though everybody's running around talking about devils, don't have a clue about it. That's the side point. Most of the things that's in the church has nothing to do with the demons in people. Most of the things in the church has the free will. Most of the thing has to do with the influences of devils. We live in a society inside the church and out anymore. If you want to do it, do it. Who cares what anybody thinks? You will one day. We better live our life constantly. Every day of our life better be this. What does God think? What is God saying? What does God think about our lives? I've seen people come and get prayer by hundreds of different people. Now, oh, come out in the name of Jesus. Nothing happens. You want to know why? Because there ain't a devil. It's the influence of the devil. And that person ain't dead in his flesh. Crucify your flesh. You crucify. Not Jesus. Jesus didn't say anything about it. When I, you get saved, I'm going to crucify your flesh and you'll never desire anything else of the world. That's not what he said. No, he said, when you get saved, I'll make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'll give you a road map. If you accept my road map and be obedient to it and crucify the desires and the wants of the flesh, which are deadly, draw away by own lust and entice. Huh? Own desires, but the end thereof, destruction and death. Well, when you live your life willfully, doing whatever this flesh here tells you, your end is destruction. may not be on this earth. This be, well, ain't nothing bad happening in my life. Destruction means hell. Yeah. The end. Let me tell you something. The end's not when you die. See, so many people say, well, I'll just die one day. Yeah, you will, but at the moment you die, instantly you'll stand before the Heavenly Father. And you'll say, he'll say either enter in or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And when he says depart from me, you're going into, into, into the fire of hell, which is destruction and death. It's dead to everything you know. The only thing you'll know after that's you're on fire, you'll know gritting of teeth, you're gnashing of teeth, you'll know bugs and worms crawling through your body. Yeah. That's the only thing you're going to know. It's death to the things you knew before. Where are you at today? Just living your life however you want to? What feels good doing? The fear of God is the beginning of what? All knowledge. Can I tell you something? Can I, just, can I lay this for you today? Till you get fear in your life, you don't know nothing about God. You just think you do. So you get the reverence, fear of God that when you stand up every morning, you know anytime He wants to, bam, you're gone. When you come to that revelation, then you start to take on some knowledge. Until you get that, you'll live your life. Oh, it's another day. Oh, bless God to do whatever I want to today. Good boy, boy. Then I go to church and I'll shout on Sunday. I'll praise the Lord on Sunday. I'll give God alms on Sunday. Can I tell you the most awesome, the most greatest worship that you can give God is your life. It's not your money. Unlike so many people think. So many people think this is worship, this is giving, this is the most powerful thing. No, this is the, probably the most likely thing. The most powerful thing that you can do is a life that is sold out to Christ. Lay down before Him and everyone around you sees it and says, that's like Jesus. And every time you make a step, holy, without a word. You don't have to speak when you live holy. For years I couldn't figure out. Smith Wigglesworth would sit down on a park bench. Someone would sit beside him the next few minutes he's convicted and he wants to get saved. I didn't understand that. I always couldn't figure it out. I was begging God for it. And one day God says, don't beg for something all you have to become. 
When you become like Christ, things like Christ happen. There's people all over the world begging for moves of God. The only move of God you need to become is Him. The move of God happens once you take on the countenance of Christ. It is impossible to be like Christ without having a move of God. Everywhere Jesus went. Hello? Miracles happen. Signs and wonders shall follow those who love. Well, I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning. I, signs and wonders shall follow those who love the Lord. It is impossible to love the Lord unless you keep His. So quit telling everybody you love God and live like the devil. Because you're a liar. And all liars will have their place in the lake of We got a lying church. Oh, I love God. No, you don't. You don't keep his commandments. So how can you love him? The Bible says it's impossible for any man or woman to love God that does not keep his commandments. If you love God, you keep his commandments. If you keep his commandments, then you start taking on the countenance of Christ and become looking like Christ. Next thing you know, things that Christ seen, you start to see. You thought I was preaching some condemnation message, but I'm not. There's no condemnation in Christ. I'm teaching you how to become Christ-like. Yeah. Right. See, the problem with the church is every time someone starts talking about sin, we take it as condemnation. We shut down, pull up our walls. I ain't going to listen. Let's your, let your choice. The problem with that is you'll never mature. You'll never learn. You'll never become. And God is all about becoming. Glory to glory to glory. Every service should be glory to glory. That only happens when you start becoming glory. I made you to be the glory of God. What is he talking about? The glory of the earth is covered. The face of the earth is covered with the glory of God. How can that be? He's not here. The Holy Spirit's here. Let me tell you how it can be. When you start becoming the glory. No, I'm preaching better than your show. When you start becoming the glory, the face of the earth is covered with the glory. Because everywhere everybody looks, there's another way of glory. There's some more glory. There's some more glory. I can't go to the store without I see glory. I can't go to... What is the glory of God? The glory... Oh, glory to God. <sighs> Can I preach to you today? Can you take it? I don't know. Every, listen. Isaiah 43, verse 7. Everyone is called by His name whom I have created to be my... What? My glory. I will do a new thing. I have formed Him. Yes, I have made Him. You're not your own. Bought with a price. The price you was bought for is to be the glory of God that covers the face of the earth. The price you was bought for is for every time someone looks, they see someone else walking in the glory. And they said, my God, what a testimony. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was bound, but now I'm free. My God, I wish somebody could hear me this morning. You're, you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony is the glory of God. Every time you speak it, every time you become it, every time someone sees you, oh, I used to know them. They wasn't like that. My God, now they're different. That's the glory. He gets the glory because you can't do what God can do. You can never change. You can never be what you need to be without God doing it for you. But as you start to become in the glory, people start looking. Oh, I know that person. What? They don't act like they used to do. Well, they should have got cussing right there. What? You know, the blessing people, what in the world's going on with them people? And the glory starts coming. Oh, I feel this word. And, and the glory starts coming off of them. Oh, shaka ba ba ba. And the glory keeps coming off of them. And the glory keeps coming off of them. And next thing you know, the glory gets on somebody else. And somebody else. And somebody else. We was called to multiply. We was never called to be long ranger. We've always been called to be a body. We've always called to be the glory. And glory is manifestations of God that will get on somebody else. Why is it not happening for you? See, you may not ask. I ask that question all the time. So I'll just give it to you too. 
When anything in here doesn't work, there ain't a problem with God. It's always a problem with no shortage in heaven, no problems in heaven. So anytime I run into things that God says I can have or I can become and it's not happening for me, then I understand to go look in the mirror. I don't go through the house. Oh, I can't believe you, God. I can't believe you wouldn't show up. Oh, God, I just can't believe it. That's the church. Complainers and grippers. Not receivers and participators. The glory of God is as easy as receiving and participating. I receive His glory. I receive what He wants to do. I receive what He wants me to become. Lay down lovers. Sold out people. It's not me that lives, but Christ lives in me. It's not my life, but His life. Not my wills, but His will. And when that starts to take place, people start to look at you and say, Oh, something's different. Something's different. Words are just words when there's no action. You can preach all you want to people, but when they look at your life and they don't see the actions of your life, it's useless. Rob can tell me he's a Christian and he loves God and I should get what he has, but if I see Rob living just like I live, guess what? I don't want what he has. You can tell me you love Christ all you want to, but if you don't love man who you have seen, you can't love. That's what the Bible says. If you can't help someone that you see, and you say, oh, you ought to help, you want to do something for God, you're not going to do that from God. You don't even love God's mankind. Every creature was made in His, not just you. Revelation for you today. I'm so saved. No, every creature was made in his image. And so you get such a heart and a burning for every creature, you ain't got it. If you can just keep walking by people and living like the devil, not in person, nobody but becoming stumbling blocks, you don't have it. There's two things that's going on in our lives. We're either the glory or we're a stumbling block. What are you? What does your life look like? So well, this ain't comfortable. I didn't, I didn't come to make you comfortable. Was Christ comfortable on the cross? Was he comfortable when they beat his back? Was he comfortable when he had, him, had his chin whiskers pulling it out? But the church wants to be comfortable. But Jesus didn't say anything about being comfortable. He said, be like Christ. So if Christ was uncomfortable, shouldn't we be uncomfortable? Oh, it's so uncomfortable talking to people. Why? Because you have a fear of man more than you have a fear of God. Hell's a whole lot more uncomfortable than what man can say or think. I'm giving you revelation today. We're so worried about what someone thinks. They're going to die just like you. There's no big and littles. They're all the same. Well, you just don't know. I can tell us who they are. I don't care if it's the president. He's going to die too. Just like me. So what we should be concerned about is not the person but the soul. We should be so gripped with the power of God on us that we want to clothe ourselves with the glory so that others will see us and we can care less what they think about us at the front but at the end something impacts them. Well they're going to talk about who cares? Can I help someone? They're going to talk about you anyway. They're either going to tear you down or talk about you. Do, why don't you let them talk about Jesus? Wouldn't it be awesome if we all quit worrying about what people thought and says, let them just start calling us Jesus freaks. Oh, that's a Jesus. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you for that compliment. Thank you so much. They're going to call you something. We live in a society of people that love the runner. We sit on our rumps and talk of. But what if we give them something to really talk about? 
I hear all the time, I want to be like the disciples. Do you? So then you have to live like the disciples. I want to be like Christ. Well, then you have to live like Christ. I have people all the time come to me, Pastor, please pray. I want exactly what you got. My reply is, then you have to do what I do. You can have what I have. Everyone can have it. Freely he gives, freely he'll give. Freely you give, freely he'll give. I wish that all would have eternal life. Everyone, all, all, I looked at the word all, remember? It means everybody. He's no respect of persons. What he'll do for one, he'll do for the other. But what he requires of the one, he requires of the other. This is not some thing where God says, oh, I like this one better than I do this. Probably he does if they're living godly. But he loves everybody the same. But whatever it took for Smith Wigglesworth to walk like he walked, and all the other O's that we all like to look at as a revivalist, you may not be, that's fine. But we look at all the older generations that went on before us and all the stuff they did and all the manifestations they seen, but the manifestations can only become when they become like Christ. It's not a prayer you pray. It's not some kind of thing that you have to keep doing, some ritual they've done. No, it was a lifestyle. It's hard not to become like Christ when you pray eight hours a day and four hours of it you pray and the other four hours you read the Word. Are you? See, we want stuff, but we don't want to pay the price to get stuff. See, you can't get something that someone else possesses without paying for the price that someone else paid. I know everybody wants to say, oh, come to this meet and give $99 and you'll get an impartation. <clears throat> That's what I think about that. There is a such thing as manifestations. There is a such thing as impartations. But impartation has nothing to do with someone being transformed to look like Christ. So if you think someone's going to lay hands on you one day and BAM, you're going to become Jesus. It's not going to happen. I'm going to bust your bubble. It won't happen. The only way you become like Christ is when you become... Remember John? 10,000 people and more was following than the, most people says. He looks around. They're all gone but the 12 disciples. He says, now are you leaving too? Peter looks up. Well, where can we go? You're the only one who holds eternal life. What was he talking about? Eating my flesh, drinking my blood. Same thing I'm talking about today. To become like Christ, you must become like Christ. You can't keep lusting and going back and forward to the old man. James says, a double-minded man think not he'd have any, none, zipped in the kingdom. So let me help all of you this double-minded. Just for a second. This is not a condemnation. This is help. If your life is like some video game, you have nothing in the kingdom. Zilt. We got that fixed. Now, if you'll make your mind up when you dip over here to Jesus to stay steadfast, unmovable, like a rock, like a tree planted by the water, when done all, just stand. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Like what? Like an eagle. You can't be this bouncy yo-yo. I used to call it yo-yo syndrome. I've had it. I had it when I was young. Yo-yo syndrome. This is where I'm up here today, shouting, jumping off the chairs, and then Tuesday comes. Oh, it's Wednesday. Woo! Yo-yo syndrome. Nothing steadfast about it. Nothing unmovable about it. Nothing stable about it. Just double minus. And the problem was always, I didn't have enough of this. Well, I read a scripture every once in a while. You know, I watched a little preaching every once in a while. Went to church. But I didn't be... See, you have to move past reading into becoming... If you take this book, and I'm closing, 
If you take this book and all you see this book is is another book to read, just quit. You're wasting time. You're wasting time. This is not another book. This is a lie book. It'll never die. It'll always be alive. It'll be alive long after us. And this book is not just to read. The Bible says to meditate upon. In other places, if you'll read it, it means to become. This must be the book that you become. This must be the book when people look at you, this is what they see. As long as you're being seen, you're just being seen. No one's going to walk by you as long as you're being seen. What must I do to look like you? No. They already have that. They're trying to figure out how I get rid of this. And we get peace that passes all understanding. Love, lo kindness, meekness, long-suffering. You remember the fruits of the Spirit? That's the stuff that we become. What must I do when everything's falling apart? Pe I tell you this all the time. Peace is not in you. It's around you. I don't have no problem with peace. I keep it all the time. I don't ask God for peace. I never have. I've told you this for years. Why? Because you can't steal my peace. Peace is not manifestation. I'm not a circumstantial Christian. Circumstantial Christians, they're moved by how things are going on. They're close to God when they have problems. They're, not far, they're far from God when everything's smooth. Peace was in us, not around us. That means you can, that's how Jesus walked in a world that crucified him and persecuted him, tore him down. That's how the disciples did it, and they didn't ever lose their peace. <clears throat> Don't believe me? Watch this. Roman jail cell, sewage up to their ankles. Paul and Silas along about midnight. Oh, praise him. Remember that story? Do you praise the Lord when you don't have no peace? No, you complain. But when you have peace, oh, praise him. And then along about midnight, <sighs> jailhouse opens. Whole family gets saved. Jailer gets saved. And Jesus shows up. Not Paul. Not Silas. Jesus. Where are you living? What are you manifesting all week long? What are you trying to become? A better you? Your best life? God, it's morning cake. Jesus is trying to get you to understand. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. What is lukewarmness? Double-mindedness. I'd like to say it like this. People who sin quit praying. People that pray quit sinning. It's real easy. I'll help you again. People who sin quit praying. That's why prayer means have eight, and then you have 800 in the church. I heard a sister the other day. I don't tell who it was. They had 10,000 members and 800 show up to their prayer meetings. Probably the 800 saved. Just saying. More than likely. Well, you can't just judge them by their... Hmm. Amazing. Know those who... Don't fall for that ignorance. That's the world standard. Don't judge me. No, you got a devil. Get saved. Seriously. I don't play patty cake. I'm done with that stuff. I'm so sick of the, this lukewarm church we live in today. Makes me want to throw up like Jesus. What are we doing to become? We must be manifesting the things that look like Him. What are you doing? Did, did you last week look more like the old man or the... 
Which one is it? Who are you? Someone asks you, oh, you're a Christian. When someone don't see you, you're the devil. Oh. Cool. It's what's going on behind closed doors when no one's watching. That matters. What you do in secret, I hope, right? Let me help you with that. Everybody likes to talk about that. And this, I'm going to break this down for you real quick. What you do in secret, I open the word for you. Everybody loves that comment. And they thought, oh, God's going to bless me in public. Yeah, he's also going to send you to hell in public. What you did in secret, I'll openly. He's going to reward you justly. Did you know that? Because see, most people don't preach that stuff. Justly. We have a just God. So whatever's going on behind closed doors, he'll justly reward you. Where are we at today? Where are you, where are you living? Look what I want to do is I want to turn some music on. And everybody wants to come and pray. Turn me on some music.